Streams help provide us with drinking water. Streams also transport fresh water to the coast, including the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the United States. Streams are important to us for a number of reasons. So if those streams become polluted or if they're in poor condition, they can have bad effects on the ecology of systems like Chesapeake Bay and also bad effects on us if they pollute our drinking water. Don Weller develops ecological models that connect environmental factors such as roads, to the health of streams. One of the biggest current problems for stream health is the increase in impervious surfaces in watersheds. These are hard surfaces like roads, buildings, and parking lots that increase the volume of rainfall that drains directly to streams rather than soaking into the earth. Even a road only a few feet wide can have a great impact on streams hundreds of feet away. Even though this is a small road, it's still a good example of a hard surface that can damage stream communities. It's raining today, and the water that's falling in the forest can soak right into the soil. But the water that falls in the pavement can't soak into the soil, so it can run off and get fairly directly into the stream. In addition to carrying pollution from urban areas, Excess runoff can cause erosion at the edge of the streams. When the stream gets cut down like this, it damages the habitats of the animals that live in the stream. The extra energy from the extra water sweeps the animals away and can sweep away the pieces of wood and other materials that they use for their habitat. So it essentially destroys the habitat of the insects. To determine the health of a stream, scientists observe the organisms that choose to live there. One of the best ways and the most widely applied ways to assess the health of a stream now is by looking at the animals that live in the stream. Some insects, like black flies or midges, can tolerate polluted, unhealthy waters. Other insects, like mayflies, are much more sensitive. We think of mayflies, which is one of the insects in the stream, kind of like a canary in a coal mine. Miners used to take canaries into the mines with them because the birds were much more sensitive to poisonous gases than were the miners. So when the birds stopped singing, they knew that they were in trouble. The mayflies are very sensitive to poor conditions in the stream, so when they begin to disappear, they're also giving us an early warning of bad health in our streams. A large network of biologists collects data on the abundance of indicator species, including mayflies, in streams. In our work looking at the health of streams, we rely on biological assessment data that have been collected by groups like the Maryland Biological Stream Survey and by organizations like the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The field biologist does the hard work of visiting each one of these sites, taking measurements of the sites and collecting the animals that are later counted to get the stream assessment. My group uses that information to develop ecological models. Don uses these data to help build ecological models of stream health in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. In those models, we're trying to develop a bigger picture of what's going on in the system by integrating lots of information. We use the measurements directly from the streams, and we also use measured characteristics of the watersheds that drain to the streams. These are pieces of information that we can get from maps like say the proportions of land use, the percentage of cropland or developed land in a watershed, or the ecological region that a watershed is in. Using the abundance of certain insects as a measure of stream health, Don relates these data to other characteristics of the surrounding watershed. With this index, high numbers indicate very healthy systems like this one, and low numbers indicate 
systems that are in poor health like this one. These numbers are boiled down from all of the information that's collected about the different animals that were found in the stream and how many of each kind were found. This is a map of our predictions of stream condition for all of the streams in Maryland. The streams that are shown in red are in poor biological condition and the ones that are shown in green are in good biological condition. The black line outlines metropolitan areas. For example, here's the Baltimore metropolitan area and here's the Washington DC metropolitan area. And one of the most obvious things in the map is that the streams that are near these urban areas are in very poor condition. Don's models show a strong connection between impervious surfaces and stream health. One of the main reasons that the streams near urban areas are in poor condition is because of the high percentage of hard surfaces, roads, parking lots, and buildings that are in the urban areas, and that causes excessive runoff of water into the streams. For some stream organisms, drastic reductions in abundance occur with as little as less than 1% of the watershed area paved. One of the most dominant results from our work has been documenting the strong effects of impervious surfaces on stream health. We've been able to demonstrate that even streams with as little as 1% impervious surfaces are starting to show losses of very sensitive organisms. Very small organisms, such as mayflies, are easy to dismiss but they can tell us about the health of our streams, the quality of our drinking water, as well as the potential effects on coastal ecosystems. People tend not to think about the importance of small things like midges and mayflies, but they're good indicators of the overall health of the system. And when we lose them, we're also losing other things about the ecological system that may be more important to us like clean water or healthy fish populations or a clean Chesapeake Bay. So we need to keep our eyes on those indicators because they're telling us about things that are even more important to us.